And uh, let us begin our service for Mike. And as we always do in the Catholic tradition, let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As Todd has said, my name is Father John Gathenya. I am the pastor here at Wayland, Danceville, Parkinsville, and uh, Cohocton. And on behalf of our community, as we begin to, to pray, I bring our condolence and uh, sympathy to you all and especially for the loss of Mike. And it is our prayer that the good Lord may open for Mike the gate of paradise, and to you, the family and friends, bring you peace and uh, consolation. And let us pray. In the waters of baptism, Christ died Mike died with Christ and rose with him to a new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And uh, let us pray. Almighty God and Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Mike, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I read from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God and have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. But Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, I know that uh, you have had a very long day, especially now that we are preparing for Christmas. It can never be an easy time. <coughs> I was looking at the obituary of Mike, and I realized that personally I have just turned 63. And uh, to officiate prayer for a brother, a person who is 65, it's just like sadly officiating prayer to an agement or a brother or somebody of almost my own age. And I'm sure it saddens you just like anybody else, 
to lose somebody that you loved, somebody that touched your life, somebody who is a brother, somebody who is a father, somebody who is a grandfather as well. And for this again, I pray with you and for you that the good Lord may bring you peace and uh, consolation. I am here to pray for Mike in the name of our faith as we believe that a journey that we began in baptism and a life that is lived well will always find its consummation to God. And that's why I am here in the name of faith that the good Lord may open that gate and offer the gift of eternal life. To Mike, as the good Lord called him, he had a purpose for him. One thing that we can never understand, and this is only the wisdom of God, is why does he call people that we love, people who are close to us? And yet this leads me to ask a question that you can be able to answer, you that knew Mike Briggs very well. How can we measure the worth of a man? How can we measure the worth of this man? And I'm sure in one way, it is not because he lived very long, but there is one thing that can never be taken away from you, and that is the love that Mike shared with you. You all who knew Mike, you remember one way or another that Mike touched your life that Mike will ever be written and be registered in the best book, and that is the book of your heart. And I remember at one time when I was a student in Belgium, I used to go and celebrate mass in the military bases, and I did this for almost five years. And when I read in the obituary that Mike was one of the person in our nation that will ever be remembered for being patriotic in the sense that he served in the military. He cared about the freedoms of our nation. He cared about the rights that we share. He cared about the independence that God has given us. And today we say to God, you have taken from one of us, one who cared, one whose footstep left for us a heritage and a heritage to follow. Although God took Mike at an early age, there are so many things that we can remember of Mike. And I know as a technician, as a carpenter, as a molder, you all know the many other things that Mike shared in the very practical aspect of your life, that you can be able to say, this man was an artist. This man 
left me this, that I may remember him today and always. And today, as I offer these prayers, this is what Mike left for you. And these are the sacrifices that we offered to God as we remember Mike, that what he left for us may always mark the memorials in our hearts that will never die. And this evening, I pray with you that the good Lord may grant Mike the gift of eternal life. And it is our Catholic tradition to pray, eternal rest grant unto Mike, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us now in faith call upon God the Almighty Father who raised Jesus, his son, from the dead as we pray for the salvation of our brother Mike. For in baptism, Mike was given a pledge of eternal life that he may now share and be admitted to the company of the saints we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Mike, who shared Christ and the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all your deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped you, that they may be rewarded for their goodness in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of you who are gathered here, family and friends, that you may be consoled during this moment of grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the services that Mike offered to the nation and to you as a family and friends, that they all may be gathered together as a unit of the manifestation of the kingdom of God among us, we pray to the Lord. And now we unite our prayers with that prayer that we were taught by Jesus Christ, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Mike. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now, let us observe a moment of silence in prayer and pray for the life and soul of man.
let us continue to assist him in our prayers. And let us pray also for ourselves. May we who mourn be united one day with our brother. May we together meet Christ when he who is our life appears in glory. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the grave and made it a sign of hope. Grant that our brother Mike may sleep here in peace and until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life, and then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see the light and know the splendor of God. Amen. And because God has chosen to call our brother Mike from this world to himself, we shall commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother Mike to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise his body on the last day. Amen. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Mike. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will, and his faith united him to your people on earth. So may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace amen and we commend mike to the good lord through the intercession of the blessed mother as we pray hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee bless thou among all women and bless the fruit of thy jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death and glory be to the father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let us go in the peace of Christ. Thank you so much for praying together. And I wish you a nice evening. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. <coughs> We've got a couple of people that are going to share, but you you can step out if you want. It's up to you. It's oh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be quite a while, or a few minutes anyway. You going to go first, Megan? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to get through this, but I'm probably not going to look up a lot because <laughs> I'm worried I won't be able to keep going if I look at anyone. <sighs> a lot of kids grow up thinking their parents are superheroes, but at the age of 34, I am still not convinced my dad wasn't a sort of Superman. He was strong, fast, so smart, and so skilled. He taught me how to climb waterfalls as a kid. When I couldn't reach the next rock, he would just toss me to it, even at the top of the falls, and I never once felt scared. I always knew I was safe when I was with him. Just a few months ago, we climbed Whiteman's Gall, and even though I can reach the rocks now, he still climbed faster than me with a cane around his wrist. After hearing the stories of how he saved Cassie's life twice after she snuck some ill-time candy, I saw firsthand when he saved her from a trapped car after one of her regular winter car crashes. <laughs> Ripping the smash door off its hinges and then ripping the center console out with his bare hands to get her unbuckled. On top of being so strong, he seemed to know at least something about everything. I used to test this theory by sitting at the kitchen island when he cooked dinner, flipping through encyclopedias and dictionaries, trying to find something I thought would stump him. I finally thought I found something when I came across the word glockenspiel. 
I smiled thinking I had finally done it and he grinned right back at me and told me that it was a percussion instrument made in the 17th century by the Dutch and that he believed Handel may have popularized it. He of course was correct <laughs> and I shut the dictionary and simply trusted that he knew everything. He taught me how to cook, how to find a way to make a broke down car, get to where I need to go, taught me to always give the B-side of an album a chance and countless trivia facts that led to one night of me calling him all excited because all three people on the Jeopardy final question that night got it wrong and I got it right. More than anything though, he was kind and humble. A neighbor we grew up with messaged me and mentioned that we had all been helped by Mike at some point or another. And I think anyone who had the privilege of knowing him would say the same. I had the immense honor to be his daughter and the immense pride in knowing how much he loved me and Cassie and was proud of us as well. I'm going to play a song that I think reflects my dad's youthful spirit and character and what he would want for me and Cassie too. Good evening. Mike's daughters graciously asked me to say a few words about Mike and I probably could tell stories about him all night. Um, when I first met him the first thing I thought was he was a massive person. I was vertically challenged. He could probably crush me like a circus peanut. <laughs> But he wasn't like that. He was, he was very kind and gentle. Didn't have a mean bone in his body. And we were altar boys, but we were far from perfect. As we took a few nips off the wine now and then <laughs> without nobody knowing. And we did some other stuff that was probably embarrassing, like telling our moms we were going to church we drove downtown and took turns as to who was going in the front door, grabbed the two bulletins to prove we were at church. <laughs> Especially later on when we raised our own kids, try to teach them the right thing, going to church and Catholic school. But like I said, we weren't perfect, but we did have a lot of fun. One time we were in the old bird's eye factory out the edge of town and we were playing a game called Man from Uncle. And me and Mike come running around a corner and we shot this guy and it was the chief of police, Nate Cole. <laughs> and we got a ride home in the squad car that day. <laughs> and neither Angie or Bob was home so Mike's parents never found out because my dad never blew him up. He said, no harm, no foul. <laughs> and another thing about Mike, he was very athletic, great baseball player. And um, later on when we were in our mid-20s, we played uh, tackle football every Sunday at the park. And... Even though Mike was kind and gentle, when he was playing sports, if you got in his way, you were going to get crushed. And he ended my football career because I couldn't work my normal job with busted ribs. So that was the end of my football plan. And one time he was walking through, Bob was walking through the lawn and said, hey, who moved that car? one of the junk cars sitting there. And Mike piped up and said, oh, I moved it with the tractor because I needed to mow the grass, which was a lie. We'd been driving the cars and Bob knew it. So from then on, he used to put the keys of all the cars in his pocket and take them to work with him. Well, Mike being the ingenious one that he was, we went into the junkyard and cut ignitions out the head keys to them and then we just wired them in and drove the cars when we wanted to anyways but 
I could stand here all night and talk about him. He was a lot of fun. And my grandpas aren't supposed to die. Love you, man. Thanks for listening. Thank you, I figure if Megan and Mark can do this, so can I. <laughs> Mike was a middle child. He was a happy-go-lucky guy. He was always smiling and happy. He was fun. He was creative. He could take anything out of the fridge and make a pizza out of it, and it was good. He was very intelligent. His knowledge was amazing on anything. He was a history buff. He would read the entire set of encyclopedias from front to back and then start over again. This is why he knew so much, right? <laughs> he was a Lord of the Rings maniac. You did not want to get him going on the trilogy. He was mischievous. He was a bit naughty at times. We all saw the naughty. He absolutely loved climbing the waterfalls at Whiteman's. I think it was his most favorite place in the world. He loved the people of Wayland. He was everybody's friend. He was a great dad and grandpa. He loved his girls and grandchildren very much. He was my brother. I will miss my long phone calls talking about absolutely nothing. And I hate that he died thinking his Christmas cookies were better than mine. <laughs> when you left us, you took part of our hearts with you. We will miss you forever and we will cherish our memories of you. Rest in peace, Mike. I also want to thank Tina and Ronnie for taking care of Mike all the years he lived in Tennessee. You checked on him daily, and I'm truly grateful he could rely on you when he needed to. Thank you. So unfortunately, Aunt Linda wasn't able to make the trip out, even though she wanted to be here with us tonight. So I'm going to read her tribute. Um, I think of, of Brother Mike as a bright star now having Christmas with Mom and Dad. All of us here are remembering his lively conversations and gift of, of communication and worldly knowledge. As his big sister, Mike was the busy little boy that I always looked out for when we were young. Um, and now I believe Mike is watching over all of us the same way. He lives in our hearts and our minds forever. Cassie and Megan, please know that Aunt Linda, Uncle Scott, Tiffany, Ian, and their families are with you and your families um, to love and support you today and always. Thank <laughs> you.